Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to Umma Radio. You are listening to the Hanafi Fiqh class with myself, Abu Musa'ab. We are continuing still on the, with the Kitab Nurul Ibah wa Najat al Arwah of uh, Imam Ashurun Bulali, rahimahullah, which we had started last week. The first two weeks we have done Al Hidayah, which is the Sharah of Bidayatul Mubtadi of Imam uh, Al Marghinani, rahimahullah. We then moved on to Bada'i or Sana'i of Imam al Kasani rahimahullah, and we did two weeks of that. And now we've moved on to Nurul Idah, and we did our first class last week. Dep- like I said, it all depends on the feedback, and unfortunately, I've not been getting any feedback. So, therefore, we are continuing with Nurul Idah again this week, and next week will depend on your feedback whether we stick with this kitab or whether we move back to one of the previous ones or what. So in any case, without further ado, we can continue on with the lesson. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. We stopped in the chapter, still we still with the, in the Kitab al-Tahara, the book of purification. We stopped under the chapter, fi ahkami su'ri, the, fi bayani ahkami su'ri, the chapter regarding the ruling of leftover water, which uh, or rather we can say remnant water where someone has drank from the water someone or something has drank from the water now what's the ruling with the leftover water can it be used or can't it be used so he says وَالْمَاءُ الْقَلِيلُ إِذَا شُرِبَ مِنْهُ حَيَوَانٌ يَكُونُ عَلَىٰ أَرْبَعَةِ أَقْسَامٍ وَيُسَمَّى سُؤْرًا when you have a little amount of water and a, an animal drinks from this water, then it falls into one of four categories, and this water is termed the sur, meaning remnant water. So we did previously what is considered to be a little water. A little water is that which is ten cubits by ten cubits, such as a small amount. This is what would be considered to be a little water. So when you have this amount, and an animal now drinks from it, now here. Depending on the animal, the water will fall into one of four categories. And so he says, the first one, Al-Awwalu, Tahirun Mutahirun, wa huwa ma shuriba minhu admiyun, aw farasun, aw ma yu'kalu lahmuhu. The first category is water which is pure and is a purifier, and it is such water where a human being, a horse, or an animal whose meat is eaten has drunk from. So, if a man or a woman drinks water, and this water left over from this well, like I say, which is 10 cubits by 10 cubits, of course, this is provided no other uh, dirt or anything had fallen into the water, then in this case, the water will be pure, and it will be a purifier. Purifier in the sense that you will be able to perform wudu or ghusl or anything with this water. So that's what we did. Tahirun, mutahirun. So it is what a, a horse drinks from, a human drinks from, or those animals whose meat is permissible to eat. And we know those like sheep, goat, cattle, camels, um, chickens, things like this. Those animals that we eat, these ones, if they drink from the water, the water will remain tahirun, mutahirun, pure and a purifier. Then he goes on to number two, and he says, "Wathani najisun la yajuzu sti'amaluhu wa huwa ma shuriba minhu al-kalbu aw al-khinziru aw shay'un min sibaa' al-bahaim kal-fahdi wa al-dhibi." The second category is dirty water, impure water. So the first water, the first category was pure, and it was a purifier. Humans, horses, and permissible animals that is their leftover water. The second water is dirty, impure, and it's impermissible to use it. And this water is that where a dog, or a pig, or a uh, hunting animal has drunk from, like a tiger or a uh, wolf. All these fanged creatures, if a fanged creature drinks from it, a cheetah, a fox, a wolf, all these other type of animals, if they drink from this water, then in that case the water will be dirty, impure, you will not be able to use it for anything. 
it's not what you term our mustamal used water that is pure in its own self but just cannot purify no in this case it is dirty water so it cannot be used for anything so that is number two he says وَثَالِثُ مَكْرُوهٌ إِسْتِعْمَالُهُ مَعَ وُجُودِ غَيْرِهِ وَهُوَ سُؤْرُ الْهِرَّةِ وَالدَّجَاجَةِ الْمُخَلَّاتِ وَالسِّبَاعُ الطَّيْرِ كَالصَّقْرِ وَالشَّاهِينِ وَالْحَدَأَةِ وَسَوَاكِنُ الْبُيُوتِ كَالْفَأَرَةِ وَلَالْأَعْقَرَبِ He said, he says now the third category. So first was pure and purifier. Second was completely dirty and impure. Third category is water which is makro. It is disliked to use this water when you do have other water present. So let's say you've got two containers over here and the one container which you are normally using from this type of animals that come to drink from it. So you, because you have another container that you can perform wudu with, this water here will become makro to use. And he says, this so this third category is water which is makro to use when you have other water available. And these animals are the remnants of a cat or a stray chicken. I mentioned previously uh, in the previous chapter about a chicken. Here a stray chicken because a person don't know what it eats and where all it goes around. That's why it is a stray ch chicken. Another facet that's affecting the water here also is these animals are eating impurities and then the impurities is all being transferred to the water. So this is one of the reasons. But uh, obviously if you see clear impurities in the water then it's a, a quite a, a different story altogether. Any case, so it is a cat or a stray chicken or any other birds of prey like uh, an eagle or a falcon or uh, th these various uh, what's this eagles and falcons and I can't think of all the other various uh, b birds of prey I uh, obviously uh, let's see okay vultures are dirty as well. So anyway, it's I leave it up to you. You know more, probably more birds of prey than, than myself. But in any case, so that it's these birds of prey which are included in this as well. Okay, and so he says it's these things: the cat, stray chicken, birds of prey like an eagle and a. Uh, falcon and so on and so forth and wasawaki nurbuyut and those creatures which live around the houses like uh, a mouse uh, is it like a mouse but not a scorpion so if you have a mouse uh, a domestic mouse drink from such water and you have other water it will be makro to use this water to from wudu was but uh, if you ha don't have other water then of course it's a different story that's why he says here ma'a wujudi ghayrihi when the e is existing other water that is uh, you are able to use but when you don't have other water then obviously it, like we say idha fata sharat fata mashrut that when the condition is not found then the condi the conditional thing also falls away so this is totally different so in any case, here in the case where you only have this little bit uh, of water in this container, obviously less than 10 cubits, and one of these type of animals come to drink from it, so uh, it now comes and it drinks from this water here, then it becomes makru to use, and uh, you then should use other water if possible, but if not, then it will be possible. So he says here, the uh, animals that live around inside the houses like uh, a mouse, a domestic mouse and uh, rats and so on and so forth but not a uh, scorpion okay then continuing on okay 
والرابع مشكوك في طهوريته وهو سؤر البغلي والحماري فإن لم يجد غيره توضأ به وتيمم ثم صلى So the final one is مشكوك doubtful water So number one was pure water which was a purifier Number two was impure water which was dirty and cannot be used Number three was disliked water when you ha have other water available And lastly number four is doubtful water concerning its purification, uh, uh, its uh, ability to purify. So he says here, yeah, it uh, this water is the leftover waters of a mule or a donkey. If you have no other water other than this, then you per will perform perform wudu with this water, and additionally you will also make tayammum, and then you will perform your salah. So it will not be sufficient to just make a wudu with the leftover water of, that a mule or a donkey has drank from, but rather you will perform wudu and perform tayammum on top of it, and in that state you will then perform your salah. But obviously, if you have other water, and this, then now you have this water which a mule or a donkey had drank from, then you will not be allowed to use this water. You will you will have to use proper clean water. Okay, so that is with regards to the four categories of water. Now he moves on to a new chapter. We moved past water now, and now we're moving on. Fasrun fi tahari fil awani wa thiyab. Now the chapter regarding investigation, investigating the utensils and the, your clothing. So, okay, you can see it from the chapter itself. It says, لو اختلط أوان أو لو لو إك لو اختلط أوان أكثرها طاهر تحري للتوضؤ للتوضؤ والشرب وإن كان أكثرها نجسا لا يتحرى إلا للشرب. When you're sitting with a container which has, as you can say, uh, you know, investigating whether the container or the clothing can be used or not. So you have some container here in this case, which most of it is pure. Then you will hurry, you will investigate to whether you can use the water to make wudu with, and whether you can drink uh, that water. So he says. وإن كان أكثرها نجسا لا يتحرى إلا للشرب. If the majority of the water is filthy, impure, then you will not investigate anything except only if it's okay for you to drink. So yeah, when you this is now speaking from a different perspective, you now come across a lot of water. Most of the water is uh, clean. So now you will look, okay, where can I get some clean water I will, so that I can drink and so that I can perform wudu with. That was the first part. Now he's saying, but if the majority of the water is filthy, so now you, there's no, uh, as you can say, no place where you can find clean water that you will now be able to perform wudu with. So in this case, obviously, you will now be making tayammum. So therefore, he's saying, in this case, you would be looking at the water to see if there's something pure for you to drink uh, for, for thirst but uh, other than that you can't you, the water would be impure and you would not be able to use it for wudu uh, so uh, this is again in cases of uh, uh, severe thirst and things if you have other water obviously all these rules and things fall away so and in case that's what regard to investigating the containers of water then he says وفي الثياب المختلطة يتحرى سواء كان أكثرها طاهرا أو نجسا. When it comes to clothing, which mixed clothing, so there's clean clothing and dirty clothing, you have to investigate it regardless of whatever case, regardless of whether most of the clothing is clean or whether most of the clothing is dirty. In any case, you will have to look at the clothing, each one investigate it and make certain that the clothing is pure and clean and there is no impurities on it. So, 
if obviously you know we know when it uh, we'll do okay we'll do this at the later stage but we know already by now that when it comes to performing solar the place where we perform solar must be clean us bodily must be clean the clothing we wear must be clean so therefore it is a condition for the validity of the solar that your clothing be clean therefore like you have to make certain your place where you are performing solar is clean. In a like manner, you have to see that the clothing you are wearing is clean. Therefore, this investigation of the clothes has been mentioned. So, okay, that is okay. The end of this chapter also. Very small chapter. It's basically just to say, look and make certain what you are using, whether the water is clean for your wudu. And if it's most of the water is dirty, you would not be able to make use of it. And the clothes, in any case, in any situation, you will have to check the clothing out properly to make certain that it is clean so that you can perform solar in that clothing. The next chapter. The chapter regarding wells and the purification, purifying the wells. So, a well is clean water by default, but now something has fallen, some impurity has fallen into the water, which has now caused the water to be affected. So now, how do you purify this water which is in the well? This is what this chapter deals with. So he says, that the Okay, he says, تُمْزَحُ الْبِئْرُ الصَّغِيرَةُ بِوُقُوعِ النَّجَاسَةِ وَإِنْ قَلَّتْ مِنْ غَيْرِ الْأَرْوَاثِ كَقَطْرَةِ دَمٍ أَوْ خَمْرٍ That the water, if it's a small well, then all the water will have to be taken out. The, okay, here yeah, you'll understand it as we go further. Depending on the size of the well, different methods of purific purifying the water will take place. So he says, if it is a small well, then some impurities fall into it, regardless of how little impurity it is, uh, then all the water will have to be taken out. Why? Because it's a small quantity of water, so therefore a small amount of impurities will be sufficient to make the entire water impure. So, uh, he says, okay, مِنْ غَيْرِ الْأَرْوَاثِ كَالْقَطْرَةِ دَمٍ أَوْ خَمْرٍ Okay, that is not cool. okay in the places where we are. This is not so uh, commonplace, but in any case, it does happen in, in the villages and things. So it's not outdated yet. So in any case, it says that all the water of a small well will have to be removed uh, by any impurity, regardless of how little it is, which falls into it. But this is uh, contrary to dung. Uh, if dung or uh, cattle or dung falls inside it and the small amount then it would be uh, as you can say uh, forgiven as long as it's not a lot of it the reason being when this kitab was written and everything and you'll find this in the villages in India as well and so on where it's still a village life where there's uh, animals and things and they pull the water from the wells and so on and not today we'll be opening taps and water comes out so in any case the, what was when it was this was kitab was written, they used to have the well and the cattle and things used to come around, so that they would drop the dung there and the dung would fall into the well as well. So it would become quite difficult if the water would have to be taken out every single time, just every time a cow comes past, some little bit of dung falls inside, therefore all the water must come out like that. It would make things difficult, therefore they say, that if a small amount of uh, dung of a uh, uh, whether it's a cow or sheep, whatever, drops fall into the well, then in this case it would be excused and uh, you would not have to pull out all the water. But if it's a large amount, then even in this case you would still have to pull all the water out. Okay, he says like for instance if a drop of blood or wine falls in, in the water, this small amount of, like this small amount of blood or the small amount of uh, wine, this will be sufficient to make all the water impure. 
The reason being, like I mentioned, uh, it's in the in the context of when the first book was written, it was unavoidable. Uh, avoidable. You don't have, the wells were not covered. The animals were walking freely, so you don't have control over what falls into the well. But so therefore, when the animal walks past and some little bit of uh, dung of the animal falls inside, there is a, a means for the water to be excused. But wine and blood and things like this, this don't come to the water all on its own. It's taken there by someone so that it can fall into the water. Therefore, if that if it touches the water, the water will all have to be pulled out. Okay, he says, وَبِبُكُوهِ خِنْزِيرٍ وَلَوْ خَرَجَ حَيًّا وَلَمْ يُصِبْ فَمُهُ الْمَاءَ وَبِمَوْتِ كَلْبٍ أَوْ شَاتٍ أَوْ آدْمِيٍ فِيهَا Furthermore, the water will also become dirty and it would have to all be pulled out if a pig falls into it. Even if the pig is pulled out while it's alive and its tongue and mouth did not touch the water, still, just by the mere fact of the pig falling into the water, the water becomes impure and everything, would, all the water would have to be pulled out because a pig itself, it is najis uh, ulain, it is actual impurity. So if it just falls inside by its own self into the well and you pull it out alive or dead or whatever, any case, the, as soon as a pig touches the water, the water becomes impure and it would have to be taken out. And he says, uh, so regardless of whether the pig is pulled out alive or not. And he says, وَبِمَوْتِ كَلْبِنْ أَوْ شَاتِنْ أَوْ آدَمِيًّ فِيهَا If a dog or a sheep or a human dies, either falls inside the well and dies, or is dead and is uh, thrown in or blown in, or kicked in, whatever the case may be. However, one of these animals or people tend to fall into the well, being dead and things, then in this case, the water will also be dirty and it would have to be uh, all pulled out. Okay, then he continues on. Uh, he says, similarly, you would also have to pull out all the uh, water from a well if there is a bloated animal which is lying in the well, even if it's a small animal. And he says here that uh, if it's not, he says, it, it, okay, here he's talking about. If the small animal, whatever small one you can think about, which falls into the water, it dies, or and it's bloated now, laying inside the water, if it's not possible to pull all the water out, then you have to pull out miata dalwin, which is 200 buckets of water from the well. So normally a well has its own bucket itself that is used in the well as is generally the case so 200 of that buckets you will have to pull out and throw out that is if it's not possible to pull all the water out if it's possible to pull all the water out then all the water has to be taken out but if it's not possible then at least 200 buckets of water must be pulled out before the water will now be considered as being pure again he says وَإِنْ مَاتَتْ فِيهَا دَجَاجَةٌ أَوْ هِرَّةٌ أَوْ نَحْوِهِمَا لَزِمَ نَزْحُ أَرْبَعِينَ دَلْوًا If a chicken or a cat or something similar to them dies inside the water, it becomes uh, necessary for 40 buckets to be pulled out from the well. وَإِنْ مَاتَتْ فِيهَا فَأَرَةٌ أَوْ نَحْوِهَا لَزِمَ نَزْحُ عَشْرِينَ دَلْوًا وَكَانَ ذَلِكَ طَهَارَةٌ لِلْبِئْرِ he says, if a so firstly, if a chicken or a or a cat falls inside the water and dies, then forty buckets of water has to be pulled out. And if a mouse falls, a mouse or a rat falls inside the water and it dies, then twenty buckets of water has to be pulled out. And this. Pulling out of that X amount of buckets from the well, this is the action, the method of purifying the well, and the bucket, and the rope, and the hand of the person who cleans the well, everything will all be clean through this process of pulling the water out of the well. 
So as you can see here, depending on the animal, the ruling will differ. If it's a, a small actual animal itself, then uh, 200 buckets. If it's a chicken or a cat, something like this, then 40 buckets. If it's a mouse or a rat, then 20 buckets. Then he says, "Wala tunajis al biuru bil baari wal rawfi wal khuf wal khafi illa yastakfiruhu nawiru aw alla yaklu dalwun an baarati." He says, "The water of a well will not become impure with the dung of camels or sheep or horses and, and cows and donkeys and so on and so forth, except if there is such a large amount in the water." that the onlooker, wherever you look, basically you see dung laying inside the water. Or every time you pull up a bucket of water, you find dung inside it. In this case here, then the water will be dirty. But other than that, if there's just a little bit inside of it, then it will be forgiven. As was mentioned in the beginning of chapter, that this is something which is not possible to uh, prevent, generally, because the animals pass by, and you have no control over what they do. But it mentioned here, it clarifies that if it's so much, a large amount inside it, then it's a different story. And then all, in that case, all the water will have to be pulled out. Then he continues. Wala yufsidul ma'u bi khur'i hammami wa usuri. The droppings of a, of a pigeon and a sparrow. If it falls inside the water, it will not damage the water. So therefore, uh, and this would apply to uh, other birds, turkeys and so on, which are also eaten as well. So basically, those birds whose uh, flesh is eaten, if their droppings fall inside the water, in that case, it, it will not affect the water. And obviously, like it's mentioned here, this is for birds who you can eat. If it's birds that you can't eat, like uh, vultures and things like that, then they will not have a different, uh, different view with regards to that dropping. Okay, but in any case, continuing on, he says, Wala bi mauti mala dama lahu fihi kasamakin wa biftain wa hayawanin wa hayawan al mali. So he says, and the death of something which does not have blood, uh, which does not have uh, flowing blood basically in it, like uh, a fish, a frog, and other creatures which live in the sea, and bugs, uh, flies wasps and scorpions and all these other things which don't have flowing blood. If any of these creatures fall inside the water, then according to the Kitab of the Hanafi Madhab, if these things fall in the water and they die, the water will not be impure. So this is with regards to, as you can, basically instead of mentioning fish and frog and everything, it's just sufficient to say uh, creatures which live in the water, if they die in the water, it don't affect the water. And if things which don't have flowing blood in them, if they die in the water, then, then too it won't affect the water. So all insects and things, if they die in the water, it will not affect the water, it will still be pure. Then he says, وَلَا بِوُكُوعِ آدَمِيِّنْ وَمَا يُؤْكَلُ لَحْمُهُ إِذَا خَرَجَ حَيًّا وَلَمْ يَكُنْ عَلَى بَدْنِهِ نِجَاسَةٌ He says, the water will also not be affected if a person or an animal whose uh, meat is eaten, meaning a permissible to eat animal like a sheep or a cow, if it falls inside the water and it is taken out while it is alive, as long as the body of the person or the animal was clean and pure and free from impurities, then in this case, despite falling into the well, the water will remain clean and you would not need to pull out any uh, buckets of water. So, Let's uh, suppose you are clean and you are busy pulling the bucket of water out and you slip and you fall into the well instead. You come, you just climb out of the well and 
and everything is fine and dandy. There's no need for you to put any buckets out. But if you were impure, let's say you need uh, a vessel and you are pulling water out now actually for you to go and make vessel. So the impurities and everything is, is, let's say, is all on you still or whatever the case may be. And now you fall like this into the water. Now it's a different story because now impurity is entered into the well. And in this case, you have to pull the water out. Okay, he continues on and he says, Wala be wakum wa ibagulin wa khimarin wa sibaa'in wa sibaa'u khayrin wa wahshin wa sakhir. Furthermore, the water will also not become impure if a mule or a donkey or a bird of prey, uh, uh, wild bird, all these wild birds of prey, like we mentioned previously, falcons and eagles and so on and so forth, if they fall in, in the water, obviously they're taken out while alive, then in this case, the, according to the most correct view of the mother, when you tell you it is sahih, so this should tell you that there exists more than one opinion in the madhab. But the more correct view of the madhab is that the, the water is still pure. It will not be affected by these creatures falling inside of it. He says, وَإِنْ وَصَلَ لُعَابُ الْوَاقِعِ إِلَى الْمَاءِ أَخَذَ حُكْمُهُ He says, if the saliva of the animal touches the water, then the water will be judged according to the saliva of the animal. So, depending whether it's a dog, whether it's a pig, whether it's a bird, birds have saliva, I don't know, anyway, so whether it's a sheep or a lion or whatever the case may be, when it leaks the water, that's basically how its saliva touches the water. Or, I suppose it falls down into the water and it opens its mouth and everything. Obviously, its saliva has leaked the water. So, the water will be judged according to the animal which has touched the water. According to the saliva of the animal which has touched the water, this you have to judge whether it is a pure water that can be used or whether it's that water which cannot be used. So, obviously, we had done previously that the uh, saliva of a dog is okay. We have not mentioned it here in this book, but in any case, the saliva of a dog is impure, so therefore, if his saliva touches the water, the water would be dirty. But if a a human being, if you drink from the water, your saliva is not dirty, so therefore the water would not be dirty either. So, depending on the, the, the creature itself, whose saliva is touching the water, that is what will be the deciding factor of whether the water is pure or impure. Continuing on, he says, وَوُجُودُ حَيَوَانٍ مَيِّتٍ فِيهَا يُنَجِّسُهَا مِنْ يَوْمُ وَلَيْلَةٍ if you find a animal which is laying dead in the well and nobody knew about it, and basically you just come across and you find a very dead animal here, you don't know how long it has been laying inside the, in the well, then it will be considered to be dirty for one day or for one night. So you come across an animal laying dead in the well, so everybody's been making wudu from the, only this water all the time, every day, so uh, obviously now, if, there, if this dirty animal, if this animal was dead in there, the water was supposed to have been pulled out, so therefore the water is dirty, so therefore the wudu that the people made from this water was actually not valid, so therefore these people were performing solar without wudu, so, which leads again to the final of the fact that their solar was invalid, which means they have to perform toba. So, how much salah must they make toba of? This is what is being referred to by this. So, it will be considered as being dirty for one day and one night. So, here you find the uh, animal laying dead. So, you can say one day and one night. Basically, in the simple term, what we come to mean is one day. So, five salah, five salawat, five salawat, five salawat, five salawat, This is what you will re-perform. Because obviously now you pull this animal out, you clear the well of all the dirty water, and when the clean water is inside, everybody makes the wudu again on the clean water, and now you make taba of the last five salah, meaning the salah of the last day and night. So that will now bring you 
up to date again so to say with your sonar. Okay, he says, وَمُنْتَفِخٌ مِنْ ثَلَاثَةِ أَيَّامٍ وَلَيَّالِيهَا إِنْ لَمْ يَعْلَمْ وَقْتُ وُقُوعِهِ If the animal is bloated, it's swollen, that you have now found in the wet, and you don't know how long it's been laying there, and then it will be considered to be dirty, the water to be dirty, for three days and three nights, if nobody knows when the animal fell inside. So, in the previous one we did, it was, Pull an animal out and the animal is still, so to say, fresh. So you don't know when exactly it fell in, but it hasn't begun to swell yet. So that would be considered again one day, one night. But when the animal has already swollen up and uh, bloated like this, laying in the water, in this case, there are three days and three nights. And for the outdoors, three full days of salah, uh, and let's say 15 salawah, all of that would have to be repeated. After you have removed all the water and gotten fresh water, it will be fresh for you, and then you will perform Qaba Salah of the last three days worth of Salah. Okay, so that is, we can stop on this chapter here, inshallah. That's the ending of this chapter. The next chapter will now go on towards towards Istinja. Um, so we're leaving the chapter on the waters and wudu itself behind. We're now going to uh, those things which precede wudu, which is istinja, like cleaning yourself in the toilet. So therefore, uh, this inshallah we can do it for next time. So on this point here we will end, and next time we can next Tuesday inshallah we can continue onwards from this point. So. That being said, I will stop here and say, Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyya Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdihi. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi.